Uh, uh, let me mute you all. No offense. That's muted. Okay. Um, so the two things we're going to talk about today are boosting engagement on your social media, particularly Facebook. And then also we're going to dive into Facebook ads a little bit. Um, I had planned on doing like do's and don'ts of Facebook ads, but I'm, I kind of decided that maybe we should talk about what they are. And then you can decide if that's something that you're interested in. And if you are interested in that, we can do like a deeper class into it. So I thought we'd go over kind of the, the gist of it today. Let's start with boosting engagement. So first off, what is engagement when it comes to social media? Um, it's basically people interacting with your content. Um, I throw this word around a lot, so I'm sure you know at this point. Um, so basically people liking, commenting, sharing, clicking, viewing, if they're interacting with it in any way, that's called engagement. So why do we care about engagement? Like, why is this important for social media? Um, mostly just because it spreads awareness about your business. Um, so the more people that engage with your posts, the higher Facebook will rank it in the algorithm. So if you post something and people start engaging automatically, they will show that post to more people. Um, so I kind of wrote like, more engagement equals wider post reach. So this means more people will see it, um, which means more people will know about your business and your brand. And then hopefully this will turn into more leads eventually, maybe not, but either way, you know, more people in the community will know about your real estate business and kind of who you are and what you do. Um, so let's talk about some methods to boost that engagement. Hi, Marcus. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so first off, you can try to post at the right times. Um, they've done a million studies at this point to try to determine the exact right time to post on Facebook to get the most engagement. Um, but there's no really perfect time. It's kind of the perfect time for your followers. Um, so the times that the people that like your page and follow your page are actually online. Um, so you can find this information under your insights tab on your Facebook business page. You just click insights and then you click posts. It's in the left column of the page and it'll basically show you like a graph kind of of when your followers are online most. So I think for hometown, it's like six, like 5 50 p.m. to like 7 like they kind of peak at 6 p.m. is when most people are online I don't know why maybe people like get off of work and get on Facebook I don't know um, but so that's kind of for hometown would be like the optimal time to post around that time um, you can see the days of the week that your followers are most active so on ours it's like Saturdays are way less active than other days um, so we don't really post a ton on Saturdays because not as many people are on Facebook. Um, hopefully they're doing things over the weekend and they're not just sitting on their phone or their computer. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. And then you can view on specific days the times that they're active most days. <laughs> um, so if it's like Thursday and Friday, a lot of people are active between like 2 to 4 p.m. Um, you know, it changes for every day. So that's kind of something to consider when you're scheduling your content on Facebook thinking about okay when can I post it um, and a lot of people will be viewing it and have access to it okay um, so another way is to be active in Facebook groups um, Facebook groups are kind of huge right now and they're basically designed to build community you know that's what Facebook is going for we talked about how Facebook's goal is to you know build meaningful relationships um, and so Facebook groups are a really good way to do this. It's a way to really personally connect with um, just people in the community, honestly. It doesn't have to be leads um, or people that already follow your page, but people that are interested in something, you know, that's relevant to you somehow. So I said you can create your own group. Um, so a great example of this, there is a, I think now it's called RVA Dine and Drink. And it kind of started as like a group for people to figure out what places were open for takeout 
during COVID. Um, but it was started by like a restaurant um, kind of group thing. So they started this page and it's really blown up into the whole community of people interested in food in the RBA area and kind of takeout and everything. Um, so that's really good marketing for them essentially because they started this and now it's like really grown. People are really into it. Um, and it gets their name out there and provides some value. Uh, you can also join another relevant group and just participate like a normal person. Um, so <laughs> there's tons of like housing groups out there. Um, so, you know, just join and kind of join in the conversation. I say everything you contribute to a group should be relevant to the topic. So don't, you know, don't join a food group and start posting about real estate. <laughs> Um, you'll probably get kicked out, honestly. But um, it's not a place to just spam your listings. So don't join a group and think you're going to post every single listing. The point is that you're engaging in meaningful conversations. You know, you're contributing something valuable. Um, you can create posts that encourage discussion. Um, so as, as we said, Facebook likes content that encourages users to have these meaningful connections. Um, <clears throat> so, <coughs> sorry. You can <clears throat> ask your followers for their genuine opinion on things. Um, so this would be kind of outside, like I know I was sending those graphics, so I was like, choose A, B, C, or D. This okay. is kind of a step further. So this is asking them for, you know, a genuine opinion, what they really think, something that's longer than a couple words. Um, a little deeper than surface level. So I said like, if there's a local news story that's breaking and has gained a lot of attention, kind of asking your followers, you know, what do you guys think about this? Um, I said like current market, um, kind of engaging in that conversation. What does it look like? What do people look for in an agent? I think that's always good, you know, feedback. And it's like, okay, well this is, you know, this is really important to know and these are really meaningful opinions that I'm hearing. Um, and I said, this is a great way to better understand your followers too. And that's so true. Like you want to know what your audience is like and what they're looking for. Um, and having these kind of discussions around real topics is a good way to get a sense of who those people are. Okay. Um, so you can also run a contest or a giveaway. <laughs> um, this sounds kind of a brainer. People love free things. I love free things. Everyone wants them. Um, and there's lots of different ways you can do this. So asking people to like your post is really common or comment something. Um, this one, ask them to post their own content and tag you. That's really great because that if they post it, you know, on their page, people will see that you've been tagged. Um, maybe that'll lead them to your page. Ask them to send you their own photo video. I think this is a really good option because it gives you um, like user generated content for later. So if people send you a bunch of photos, like you can pick a winner and, you know, give a winner the prize or something, but then you'll have all these photos and you can say, oh, wow, love this photo that so-and-so took. Um, and that type of content gets pretty good engagement because people like to see their own, you know, photos posted and like to see that you appreciated them taking the time to submit something. Um, so that's a cool idea. So you can also boost your Facebook posts. We're going to get into this a little more in a couple minutes when we start talking about ads. Um, but it's essentially paying for more people to see your post. Um, so I wrote some pros and cons. Pros, it's the most effective way to get engagement, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and it does go live almost instantly. It's not like an ad where you kind of have to set it up. It's really quick. You can boost it and it'll go live. Um, and then budgets can be very low. So the lowest is a dollar a day, um, which is pretty cheap when you think about kind of marketing costs. Um, cons, of course, it does cost money. <laughs> and if you want to reach more people, you'll have to pay more, unfortunately. Um, so here's a little more about it. You can boost almost any type of post. Um, so whether it's a link, a video, a photo, et cetera, it's, it's a post that you've already created. So say, you know, we post a link to one of our blog articles and it's getting great engagement. You know, this is just paying a little extra to have that same post um, in more people's news feeds, essentially. 
And then customizable audiences. We'll talk about this too. Um, you can target your audience by several different factors to make sure that you know, you're getting the most out of your money if you're paying for it. Um, you can choose the amount of time you want to be boosted and then be sure to add a call to action button, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Then here are a couple other ways um, to boost engagement. Use Facebook Live and Stories. We talked about this a little last week, I think. Um, this, you know, Facebook loves when you use Facebook Live. So it'll be boosted really high in the algorithm and more people will see it. Um, I said post less, so focus on posting that higher quality content less frequently. Um, if you post, you know, six posts a day or something, but nobody's liking them and nobody's commenting on them, um, Facebook's gonna show them to less and less people, unfortunately. So it's kind of better off if you say, I'm gonna post once a day or maybe once every other day, but it's content that you've really thought about and, and curated. Okay. Um, analyze your most successful posts and try to emulate them, like try to copy them. Um, so if you have one that's performing really well, kind of look at it and say, okay, what do people like about this and how can I try to replicate that in some other way? You know, not the same exact post, but what elements of it can I take and kind of recreate? Um, always comment or reply if anyone engages with your page. We talked about this too. Just, you know, making sure that you're actually connecting with people. Um, this will encourage more people to engage with your page if they see that you're responding. I said, <laughs> ask a slightly contentious question. So for this, I was kind of thinking like, something that is kind of silly, but people tend to be really firm in their <laughs> opinions on. So maybe like, do you say pecan or pecan? type of thing you know where a lot of people are pretty stuck on one side um that's kind of fun because it just encourages like debate i don't know with, like redskins versus cowboys i don't know i don't watch football <laughs> you know what i mean something like that where people are pretty yeah they're pretty um into their own opinion they're confident in it um i think those are fun people love to talk about things that they love um and then you can always ask your followers to choose see first when they go to follow your page. So if you pull up your page, it'll say, say you like them already, it'll say liked and then it'll say following. And if you click on following or like hover over it, there'll be a drop down menu. And on that drop down menu is an option that says see first. And this will ensure that they see all of your posts um, when you're posting them. So I know that's kind of a lot to ask your followers. Um, to do. But I think with, you know, especially with close friends or family, um, you can always ask them to do that. It's really easy. It takes two seconds and then they'll see everything that you're posting. Okay, now let's talk about ads a little bit, unless anyone has questions about engagement before we dive into ads. I'm trying to keep it quick. <laughs> one, I have one question. Yeah. Back on Kate, uh, this is Brenda, as you know. Back on your slide where we were talking about um, paying for ads, I thought it mm -hmm. said something about um, make sure it's less than seven days. What was that? Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Um, okay. I said aim for less than seven days because kind of what they found is that ads that run longer than seven days, people kind of get this thing called ad fatigue. <laughs> Um, okay. So they see it too many times and it kind of loses impact. Um, okay. So you kind of want to make sure that your ads are like short in time frame um, and really high quality in content because people see them, you know, multiple times over the course of, of your ad cycle. Um, so that's why they kind of say try to keep it short because people will stop engaging and interacting with that ad after a certain amount of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, now I thought we could talk about kind of the basics. Um, so what is a Facebook ad? It's kind of self-explanatory. It's basically an advertisement that you pay for to go on Facebook. Um, you can choose, you know, where you want it placed, if it's on the mobile or desktop version, and you can also have it shown on Instagram since they're owned by Facebook now. Um, it's a great way to target potential leads because it 
frequently shows up right in their newsfeed if that's where you choose for it to be placed. So when people are scrolling through already, um, it'll just pop up, you know. And then it'll show up as a sponsored post. I'm sure you all have seen these. Um, and it just has like a little label that says sponsored. So people can tell it's an ad, um, you know, and that you pay for it to be there. So why should you consider using Facebook ads? I think the number one thing, as we've talked about, is organic reach for business pages has really declined. Um, so less, less people are seeing your content naturally, um, just like if you post something and hope people see it, less and less people are actually, you know, having it pop up on their newsfeed, unfortunately. Why is it? Um, you can target specific audiences. This is really key. Um, I put high ROI because it's kind of true. If you're targeting the right people, you're going to get, you know, more bang for your buck kind of thing. Um, there's a wide range of options to customize your ads, um, kind of based on what you're trying to achieve. So this is really nice too, um, cause you can pick a goal and your ads will kind of work towards that goal, um, versus just regular content. And then Facebook also offers, this is kind of more complicated, but it's called the Facebook Pixel. And it's essentially like a little bit of code and you can insert it on your website. I mean, it doesn't look like anything, but it'll be on your website and it'll track who visits your website. So you can retarget them later on Facebook with your ads. So say someone clicks on a link to your website to view, you know, a certain property, you can set it so that property will show up later in their newsfeed, which is kind of creepy, but a really effective marketing tool. <laughs> um, and just kind of getting that in front of people again and again, so they see it and then remember it. So there are multiple types of Facebook ads. I thought we could go through some of them and talk about them. We talked about the boost ads. This is on the right, an example of kind of just like a normal, boosted ad you know it's a post there's nothing really special about it <laughs> they just paid a little money so more people could see it um and as we talked about you can kind of pick your goal and choose the audience that you want to see it um determine your budget and how many days you want to boost it for and i would say boost posts work um best if it's a post that you already see is getting a lot of engagement you know, so if you've posted something and nobody has clicked on it, it might not be the best post to boost. Um, kind of aim to boost the ones that are already doing relatively well in terms of engagement. Okay. Um, so this is like a promote your page ad. I don't know if you've seen these pop up in your newsfeed. So this is what ours would look like if we ran this type of ad. It's basically a link to our page and it says like page. Um, and it, it pulled the description from our about section. Um, so this will show up in people's, like you can see at the top, it says preview desktop newsfeed. So this is what it would look like if I was on a desktop scrolling through Facebook, this would show up. I'd be like, oh, I'm interested in hometown realty, you know? And then you could like the page and people will see hopefully your posts in the future. Um, so this is targeted obviously towards people that don't already follow your page. Um, you can find it on your page. There's an option and it will say promote. Um, I think on mobile it's at the top and on desktop it's in the left towards the bottom. Um, it's pretty easy to do. There's not a lot of, um, you know, you don't have to like come up with a post or come up with an ad or anything. So this is, you know, if you're trying to get more likes on your page, this is a great option. Then we have call to action ads. I think these are key. Um, this kind of is from what I've seen most, most businesses use these um, because it does encourage people to interact with your page in some capacity. Um, so they offer different, different call to action buttons. So for example, send message, call now, shop now if you're selling a product, learn more. Um, and they'll take you different places. So like if you set up a shop now, it'll probably take you, you know, to the products on a website or something. Whereas if you click, if it says send message, it'll pop up with your messenger and you can get in contact with the page, you know, directly. Um, so that's just a good way. Your ad should always have some type of call to action and encourage 
uh, followers to, you know, interact with you other than just looking at your ad and kind of get in touch with you. Okay. Um, carousel ads, most of these that I've seen um, are for products. So like this is one that popped up on my page, Felix Gray. Um, and it's basically like a running carousel. You can swipe through and they have different photos and links. Um, I said this could be good if you're advertising, you know, multiple listings and you kind of want to put them all in one ad. People can just swipe through and look at them. If there's one that catches their eye, they could click on it. They'll take them to your website, that type of thing. Um, it's good if you're trying to, you know, kind of advertise multiple things at once or multiple links to a page or photos. So this, I don't know what it's called besides promote your website. This is basically a specific link that you're um, advertising. So for this one, they're advertising this like wiki buy site, how to shop at West Elm without paying those prices. Um, so this could be like if there's a specific listing that you want people to really look at and engage with um, or like your property search or like hometowns property search um, a blog post if there's any type of like specific link that you want people to look at this is a good option and that can also be your personal website it doesn't have to lead to anything <laughs> um, and then this would be kind of like a lead generating ad so i stole this from josh's <laughs> um, page because his ads always pop up on my newsfeed. Um, so you can see he has like get our free guide for first time home buyers in Richmond. Um, and there's like a little download button. So this would be gated content because when you click on the download button, they're going to ask you to put in your email, um, like put in your first and last name or something, and then you have access to that content. So then that, you know, of course he has that information now that could be a potential lead. Um, so basically it encourages people to provide their information. There's a couple different ways this can be set up. Like Josh's is one, you could do contests, like submit your email to be entered in for a chance to win, blah, blah, blah. Um, an email sign up, if you're encouraging people to maybe sign up for like new listing emails or something like that. Um, this is, you know, just a good way to collect that information, collect emails. Um, and add it to your list of leads. So, and then I thought we could talk a little bit about getting started, like how to even how to even get started. Um, first, you need a goal. We talked about this weeks and weeks ago, I think. Um, but goals are very important. So you need to figure out what you're trying to get from your ads. Um, so this could be generating new leads. Maybe you have an event coming up and you really want to boost attendance, get a lot of people to go, um, increase traffic to your website. You kind of want to figure out what specifically you would like to achieve with the ad. Um, otherwise, there's, you know, there's not a lot of purpose. Your money won't be used well. Next, you need a Facebook Business Manager account. I don't know if any of you have these. Um, you have to set up separate from your Facebook business page. I think it's just business.facebook.com, but you can also just Google Facebook business. <laughs> um, and this is where you manage your ad account. So this is where you can set up your ads, pay for them, um, pick your audiences. It's kind of like a back end to Facebook and it's only for business pages. Um, it's free to set it up. It's pretty easy. Um, there you can determine and create your audience. So this is, you know, you can pick ages of people that you'd like to target, the location, interests. Um, you can also exclude people. So say, I don't want people that already like, you know, hometown realty RBA. Like I'd like to target people outside of that group. You can do that. Um, you can really be as like broader specific. I would recommend being more specific um, and targeting people, you know, that might actually be interested in using your services, not just 50,000 people near Richmond or something. <laughs> um, choose your objectives. So we talked about this. Facebook will list, um, when you're setting your ad up, they list, I think almost like 10 objectives. The one that fits best with your business goal and what you were trying to achieve. Um, and they will tailor your ad kind of to fit that objective. Um, 
So pick where you want the ad to be placed. We talked about this. This is, you can either have it in the news feed, you can have it in Messenger, um, and you can also have it on the desktop on the right side. Um, I don't know if you've been on Facebook on desktop, but it'll have like two to three ads, um, kind of really little, no, it's on the right side, yeah. Um, really small, they don't show up in your actual news feed, but it's like when you're scrolling, they're kind of, you know, static on the right side. Um, so choosing where you want that ad to be, where you think that fits best for your goals. Um, and then creating your post, you know, so picking a photo, video, writing the copy, writing a good call to action, um, choosing a button for it. This is, this is all done in Facebook Business Manager. Um, so it's, once you get a hang of it, it's pretty, I would say pretty simple to use. Can I ask and a question? Okay. Yes. Um, if you don't set your ads up through the Facebook manager, you just, mm -hmm. you know, you just randomly post maybe, <laughs> um, <laughs> will they not be as effective or you have so, a Facebook manager piece? Yeah. So Facebook manager is, is really the only place to kind of set up your ads and get them ready. Yeah, I think for a boost post, um, to do that right from the Facebook page. Uh -huh. um, so like normal Facebook, but I want to say for any other, um, I do have to do it through Facebook business manager. Um, Cause it is like you have to go through several steps and you do have to have a credit card on file type of thing. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, it's not offered right on Facebook's normal, like front end platform. Yeah, well, I've boosted posts and I think I kind of mm -hmm. accidentally uh, hit on Facebook manager. They were trying to encourage me to, you know, manage yeah. the page, I guess, but I didn't follow through with that. I just on occasion will post something and, you know, boost it, pay for it to run for a couple of you know, days or what have you. But mm -hmm. And, and when you boost it, they do give you the option to decide kind of what you want to do with it. But if I do it through pay, Facebook Manager, are you? I'll have more control, obviously, I guess. Is that the... Um, yeah, so Facebook Manager will give you the option to, to set up an ad originally. Um, so when you're boosting it, that's a post that you've already created, right? Okay. And like put on your page. Facebook Business Manager will let you essentially set it up from the beginning, kind of like a campaign. Um, okay. So you'll create the original ad, you'll determine, you know, the goals and what you want to accomplish with it. Um, and it'll get, there's more options in terms of like what type of ad you'd like to post. Um, Boost is pretty limited to what you've already created and just getting more people to see it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Boost is still like a really great, um, a great option though. You know, and it's really easy. So yeah, <laughs> if you don't want to like actually set up ads, this is a really good strategy. Perfect. Hey, <laughs> hey Kat. Yes. Kat, this is Liz. Just a one other question, I guess, relevant to as you're talking about sort of the ads, you talk a little bit about, you know, if you do it on the desktop, it scrolls on the, you know, or it stays static mm -hmm. on the right, that sort of thing. Do you know what the like usage is on the mobile Facebook? I guess. Yeah. Mobile, like non-app versus mobile website versus desktop. Do you know that or, right? Because that's. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the exact numbers, but mobile usage is way higher okay. than desktop usage. And I want to say mobile app usage is higher than just mobile browser. Cool. Um, that was Facebook what my really guess was. Doesn't... Yeah. Facebook really wants people to download their app and use it. Um, and most, I mean, most people today use mobile far more than desktop for yeah. <laughs> almost everything. Um, so if I was making an ad, I would probably opt to have it, you know, on the mobile version, like in the news feed. Um, yeah. Cause honestly, that's where most people are doing their scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But they do have different, Facebook does do different costs for the different placements because they know you know, less people whatever's, are likely to be on the desktop kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever's highest is what's getting the most usage. Okay. Yeah, cool. exactly. Thank you.
Of course. Um, yeah, so just a couple quick things to remember. It takes time to run and optimize a really good ad campaign. Um, so like the first ad you run might not be super successful, um, just because there's a lot of different options to try, right? So maybe your target audience was not, you know, the exact right target audience, so you want to switch that around, or maybe your type of ad was a little, you know, not optimized for the people that you want to reach. Um, it might take a couple attempts to kind of figure out what works for you um, and what's successful. So I would say don't, you know, if you run one and you don't see a lot of return, <laughs> don't get discouraged because it does take a couple tries. Um, I said there's a bit of a learning curve with Facebook Business Manager. Um, it's true, like when you first log on, it looks kind of overwhelming, but there are a million great resources out there to take you through step by step how to do it. Um, and if you're interested in those, I can send some of those out for sure. Um, and once you figure it out, there's a lot of cool features in it. There's a lot of different things you can try, ways to optimize your, your ads and your content. Um, and then lastly, ad content should be just as engage, engaging as organic content. Um, it has to be something that your audience is going to want to click on when they see it. Um, so whether that's like, a really great photo or a really interesting video or something, you need to think about your ad content as much as you think about your organic content. Because um, there's no point in having an ad if it's like boring and nobody wants to click on it anyway. <laughs> so just make sure when you're, when you're coming up with your ads that something that you would be like, oh, that's interesting. Like I want to learn more or, you know, that's a really good resource. I want to use that. Um, yeah, otherwise, as I said, it's kind of pointless. But, all right, those are my slides for today. Um, does anyone have any other questions? No, you're all muted. So feel free to unmute if you have questions. <laughs> that was good, Kate, no? some good information. Good. Thank you. Okay, um, Thank after you that, is, is anyone interested in running ads or like would like to learn I don't know, like the specifics kind of of ads. I, I to engage. I've what been you thinking say? about it quite a lot, actually. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to determine if like people would want a class on that. Or not. Yeah, I'll definitely be great. I like class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if you yeah, ran yep. one, I definitely I would participate because um, I, I need all the help I can get with that technical piece. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Same here. <laughs> hey, Kat. Yes. Hey, Kat, I had to jump on late. I was just wondering if I could have access to the slides you showed earlier. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. I'm going to send them out okay. um, when I finish. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And one and wait, which, which Shannon is that? Just so uh, Parker. Know. Parker. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Um, I've got one last question. Um, I've got Facebook on my phone, um, but most mm -hmm. of the time if I'm posting, I'm doing it from my desktop. Okay. Um, are you, are y'all saying that stuff that I post on my desktop to Facebook is not being seen by the mobile people or as quickly or? No, it is. Um, so it doesn't matter where you're posting from. It's all kind of going into Facebook, so everyone should have access to the same stuff. We were just saying more people typically view Facebook on a mobile device um, rather than the desktop. Yeah. Okay. So when you're kind of thinking about your ads, you want to take that into consideration. Um, okay. Since you can choose like to just have it placed on the desktop or just have it placed mobile or both or wherever, um, just kind of like thinking about that since most people do use it on mobile phones so i can choose when i'm posting something boosting something i there's an option for me to choose whether i want to show on the desk or the mobile app you can with boost if you set up an ad originally you can um i'd have to look into if you can pick with boost i don't know probably yeah. not because i i haven't seen that i but yeah. anyway Boost, yeah, Boost offers less features than like an original ad, um, kind of setting one up from scratch. Makes sense. So it wouldn't surprise me if they did it, but they might. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
Any other questions? Kat, so when you boost, it goes out to uh, folks other than your friends and their friends or? Yeah, so you can pick. Um, it'll give you an option and you can say like, I think you can either create your own audience, um, kind of define that group of people that you want to reach. You can also, I think there's an option to send it to people that like your page already. So the people that are already kind of seeing your content and then people that don't like your page. Um, so you, you really can choose like who you want to see it, which is pretty nice. <laughs> okay. um, so like if you're trying to reach people that already follow your page, but maybe just aren't seeing your posts because of Facebook's algorithms, um, you can choose that and say like, oh, I just want to target people that already like my page and follow it. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. Yeah, that's and cool. cool. On tagging, um, when I, if I tag someone in a photo or an ad or whatever, um, mm -hmm. if it's going to my friends anyway, um, I can't tag someone that's not a friend, correct? So for business pages, you can tag any other business page. Okay. And I think if you're personally friends with them, you can tag them. I would say primarily try to tag like other business pages because um, that encourages them to share the post on their page. Um, oh, okay. Other business so, pages. yeah. Okay. Yeah, on your business page, I would say it's, it's less about tagging like personal friends. Um, it's more about, you know, tagging other businesses or other people in the community, you know, that are kind of related. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, you find, and you find them just by clicking on tag and would you get a list or do you just have to sort of make your own list? Um, um, you search? can search um, basically whoever you want to tag. So like, say I'm writing a post for hometown and I want to tag Clover, who's like across the street, a business that's across the street. I would write my post and then I, I would type like the at key, like the, the at signal. Okay. And then I type in, you know, Clover children's clothes and see if their page pops up. Typically it will, if you have the exact name and then you can click that and it'll tag them. So when I post, they'll get a notification saying, oh, Hometown Realty is like tagged you in post, you know, and they can go in, like it, they can share it with their followers, that type of thing. Gotcha. Thanks very much. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay. I think we're good for today then. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thanks.